Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm your host. And on this episode, I will update you on all the big things to happen for the upcoming week, such as announce this week's live episodes. We host a live interview every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and discuss the upcoming episodes we release for every week. Uh, so on Monday, a weekly update, the one that I'm now streaming live on a Sunday is released on Mondays. Tuesdays, we have an old interview that is that has been hosted live. Uh, it's published into our podcast recording. Wednesday is our Get Better plan. So for those footballers out there, we post educational content every week. And that content is from our academy platform for those on our paid memberships. Um, part of the uh, recording of those presentations is uh, turned into a podcast recording for our podcast listeners. Friday we have a second interview for the week. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. We'll start with our footy tips for the week. Round two um, didn't go so well for me. I tipped Doggies, which was wrong, against Carlton. Ticked the Swans uh, to get up over Geelong round two, which was correct. Collingwood to beat uh, Crows, which was correct. Essendon to beat Lions wrong, Port to beat Hawks. I don't know who would have tipped Hawks, but that was an unbelievable performance by Hawthorne. I oh, got that one wrong. Suns v Ds, got that one right. North v Eagles, correct. Richmond v GWS, correct. And then Dockers and Saints are yet to play. Um, streaming live at 6pm on a Sunday right now, so they're playing tonight. Um, remember, if you're listening and you got 9 out of 9 of those tips correct, and you can prove it, then screenshot us, tag it on Instagram, and you'll get a prize. Round three, I'm tipping the Doggies to beat Sydney Swans, home game. Melbourne to beat Bombers for their home game. Port Adelaide to beat Crows, although that's going to be an interesting contest now that um, Port haven't started off the year very well and Crows have been competitive. GWS to beat the Suns. Uh, Collingwood... I reckon the Cats will bounce back and they'll get on the winning list to beat Collingwood, although Collingwood are up and about and playing good, fun brand of footy. Brisbane to beat North Melbourne for their home game. Carlton v Hawks, that's going to be a fun game to watch. I reckon could go either way. I'm going to lean towards Carlton because they are up and about in the middle, but could easily see Hawthorne winning that one. St Kilda v Richmond. Richmond, I reckon, will take get the points there. And then West Coast v Dockers. Paul West Coast been hit hard with the COVID protocols and they've got a depleted squad um, on top of a few injuries at the moment. So um, I feel like the Dockers will get the win there. So make sure to get involved. Like I said, screenshot your round three tips. And if you get 99, you're going to get a prize uh, valued at $99 uh, for a free program um, for four weeks on our high performance program. So make sure to check that out. And if you're a coach, and you're not interested in that online program, I'm more than happy to accommodate and replace that four-week program with a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself. This week for the upcoming podcast, we have Daniel Cherney. I interviewed him last Thursday. His episode will be released on Tuesday. He's a sports journalist at Code and previously has worked at The Age, and it was great to have a sports journal that works specifically in AFL football uh, on our podcast, uh, it's a super competitive industry, uh, working in elite sport for journos. So it was great to share Daniel's journey, how he worked his way to the top, working in the age with people like Caroline Wilson and, and Wayne Carey, and what he learned from being in that environment, and then what he's now doing at Code. So make sure to check out that interview. Um, if you're uh, someone that has your own business, marketing is obviously really, really important in this day and age. Um, Daniel gives some tips and tricks on how you can build engaging stories, obviously something he's an expert in. So uh, I definitely got a lot out of that. And then it's also just an inspiring story for athletes, uh, coaches, uh, anyone that wants to get the most out of themselves in terms of what work you have to put in and, and uh, how hard he worked to get to where he is. Wednesday, our Get Better plan is why you need to surf the force velocity curve. So, curve. so for all the strength and conditioning coaches out there, you'll be aware, well aware of velocity-based training and max strength, um, but also working on your speed strength uh, and, and ensuring that we're surfing the curve. So for the athletes out there, this is a great presentation on educating you the importance of 
not just lifting heavy if that's all you do. We also want to do our power and speed-based work. And conversely, if you love doing that power and speed-based work, it's also really important to work on our max strength. So um, obviously when we're lifting heavy and it's slow, that's high force, so one end of the of the uh, curve. And then when we're moving lightweight at a, at a fast pace, that's high end on the velocity but low force. So that's what the whole presentation will be around. So make sure to check that out. Release that on Wednesday. Thursday, super excited to have our third live collaborative event. This will be revolved around uh, hosting the Australian leading kicking coaches all around the country. We've got Ben Stanley from Enhanced Football, Mark Choco Williams, who's our head development at the Melbourne Football Club, obviously Premiership AFL coach, Nathan Chapman, uh, the Australian Oz Pro Kick. Uh, so he's played high-level football, of course, himself as an athlete now, helping uh, footballers transfer over to punting in America, and Josh Groudon, GWS player, as well as being punter over in the States, college football, um, running his um, – he's founder of his kicking consultant business as well. So they'll be all discussing a particular area for 10 or so minutes and um, really looking forward to hosting that event. So if you're a footballer, coach, uh, even strength and conditioning coach, because we've got Kevin Ball on as well, um, sorry, I missed his name earlier. So five great experts in the field um, covering all things that you need to know about improving your uh, performance from a kicking point of view. So to tune in for that one, it'll be on our YouTube channel, as all our live chats are, and it will be at 8.30 p.m. on the 31st of March. Then Friday, we have Darren McInnes, founder of Core Advantage, a bite-sized episode from our last live collaborative event where we had Australian leading high performance facilities. Um, so Darren presented on how to increase your surface area of, of luck for high performance in life and sports. So super inspiring uh, and great philosophy to take on board. So definitely recommend listening to that one. And um, that podcast will be released on Friday. I'm now going to head over to Instagram to answer your questions. G'day, Instagram. Thank you for tuning in for this week's Prepare Like a Pro Live Chat Sunday show. We've had two questions come through our Instagram, and I'm going to get stuck straight into them. So first one is from Michelle. Best way to structure your gym and running and club training sessions when playing games on a Sunday. Great question, Michelle, and uh, glad you asked because we are in season for footballers. G'day, Geordie Love, becoming a regular of the Sunday show, mate. We'll have to do one soon. Um, but getting back to your question, Michelle, best way to structure footy for Sunday games. So um, the fact that you've written games, that's a good thing. So I'm assuming you've got seven-day recovery. So you, you, for the, all those listening in that, that train and prepare on, for Sunday games, this would be my advice for a typical week. Um, and that would be to have your training first training session for the week, so your P1 on a Tuesday, second training session on the week on Thursday, and then if possible, depending on the level you're playing and then everyone's schedules and including coaches, staff and players, having what we call captain's run on a Saturday for Sunday game and how that would look specifically from your conditioning, strength and power to football. Tuesday would be very much feel-good football fundamentals point of view, um, so you would be doing... Uh, active recovery, um, and you want the athletes feeling better than when they came in um, from that recovery point of view. But then the coaches are also getting in some good craft. They're probably hosting their re their review for the week, um, and they might be breaking down some tactical, technical things um, that popped up from the week that they wanted to work on for the upcoming game. Uh, so Tuesday's quite low level, but from a gym point of view, it's our main strength session for the week, so lifting heavy. Uh, and that's really important. What we do know when the body's uh, fatigued, coming from a game because you played on Sunday, um, it, it isn't too damaging and you can get a high intensity in terms of lifting high weight, so max force. What when what doesn't work so well is if you're trying to power training um, when, you're, when you're fatigued. Um, what we also know from a performance point of view, it works well for us to do that heavy lifting in the week because that can contribute to some residual muscle soreness. So from Tuesday to Sunday, that should be recovered. Um, and then you can do your power training later in the week, which will prime you well for performance. So that way we're, we're sort of knocking off two birds with one stone. You're getting the long-term athlete development by lifting heavy once a week. 
you're getting well recovered. Athletes aren't going into games sore, which they like. And then you're also still getting your power development, uh, rate of force development later on the week, which should get them primed for that week. So that's a good recommendation from the gym point of view. From a conditioning point of view, um, you really shouldn't be having any major targets you might have if you've got GPS on the Sunday games uh, and it was a small field, maybe wet weather footy and the sprint distance was down, then you might give them some max velocity exposure on the Thursday. Um, the way that I've typically done that in the past, if we've got a seven-day recovery and it was a low sprinting distance game, is we'll work out roughly what their four-week average is over a, a four-week weekly average is for their sprint distance. And if they didn't hit that on the weekend, we have a rough idea of what their normal game week is, then we'll give them a target. So let's say they might do um, five uh, sprints first couple are at 80% with a jog recovery through the center square. And then the last three, they're building up to some more high intensity work where they're getting true sprinting in at 90% and above uh, with walk recovery. And that way you're getting, one, you're getting some good, you're keeping up your chronic loads from a sprinting point of view. So that way you're not getting massive spikes on high, some games and then lower on others. Um, but you're also priming them for, for the upcoming Sunday game. Hopefully that helps, uh, but from a conditioning point of view, save all your tickets for the game. For those that had a buy on a Sunday, you might give them a match conditioning session. That would be about 70% of, of a normal game, so they're still freshening up um, because it's a long season, uh, and that's the three big ticket items when it comes to football in season, how I'd prepare for Sunday to Sunday games. Hopefully that helps you, Michelle. Uh, feel free to follow up with any questions, and I'll add it into next week's live chat. Great question. Next one is from – can't see your name there. just says, what should you eat before and after a game? Great question. Not really my area of expertise. I do know Jess Spenlove's got a great ebook that Prepare Like a Pro Athlete do have a coupon code for. So if you head over to Jess Spenlove's Instagram page – and look at the game day ebook. Uh, you should get a discount on that. I believe the coupon code is PLP Athlete, so you can check that out. Um, but from from a personal point of view, more than happy to share my experience. I don't play football, but if I did, I would work back from the game day. So um, let's say you're playing two p.m. on a Saturday. Um, wake up at your normal routine time. My first meal might be around eight to eight thirty a.m. On game day, you want to have familiar foods, so. I'd typically be eating something that uh, I know my digestive system can stomach well uh, on game day, so you're not going in with upset stomach, which is particularly important when you're, um, you're on game day because that way you're going to go in feeling good. You don't want to be um, disturbed going into it, uh, going into a game. So familiar foods, first meal around 8.30, 9 o'clock, and then roughly let's say your driving time would be 40 minutes to an hour typically to, to games. So that's when I'd, I'd time my meal just before that drive, so that way it's a three-hour period before your second main meal so that way you're well dehydrated dehyd no, well digested before going into your next game hydration is really, really important so that's your glucose element that's your energy so two main meals um, to make sure that your, your muscles are well fueled going into the game and you're well nourished going into the game um, and then in terms of the other element of game day performance from a nutrition point of view is hydration so making sure you're well hydrated on the day you're not overdoing it, um, so your stomach's not full as well. So we want to make sure we're aware of how much our stomach can tolerate. Um, so making sure we've got a nutrition plan and a hydration plan that suits you and you've practiced it over your practice matches and your main training sessions. And then from there, it's just the body loves routine. So like I said, it should be familiar, uh, the ingredients that you're using, but also the routine that you're following and you're working back from the game time. That's really, really important. And then, um, on a, uh, you know, if, you, if you're someone that, particularly gets hungry and you've got a fast metabolism, you might have a bit of a snack an hour before the game just to give yourself a bit of a top-up. Uh, and then obviously you want to make sure you're getting either some gels throughout the game, quarter time, half time, to top up your glucose levels and, and make sure that you're rehydrating with not just water but also magnesium uh, and all electrolytes, sodium. Hopefully that helps. But like I mentioned, um, I wouldn't. that would be put my personal experience with what I would do, um, but definitely seek an expert and Jess Benloff's got a great ebook specifically on this for footballers, AFLW and AFL uh, athletes. So head over to Jess, and, and I'm sure if you ask her some questions of her ebook, she'll be more than happy to answer. 
Next question. Sorry, guys, the names aren't popping up, but best way to structure your gym and running. Oh, that one I've, I've already answered. Lucas, bit of a sore foot from playing. Team to win 2022-2023 VFL Premiership. We'll wait and see, Geordie. Mate, who knows? We got a good win today, so that's a start, but keeping the lid on it, mate. A uh, bit of a sore foot from playing a lot of footy last week. Any tips to eat? to eat right for Saturday. Lucas, I would get that foot um, assessed, mate, because we want to make sure we're looking after our feet. Um, so firstly, get a diagnosis so you've got clarity, both from a physical point of view but also mentally going into the game. Um, you've got plenty of time to recover and book that in with six days away from game. So that would be my number one tip. And from a recovery point of view, um you can sort of um, work from there once you've got it, but you followed up there and said should they said it should be okay, which is a good thing. So once you've got that medical clearance, then from there you can. Um, I would wouldn't put too much emphasis on pushing yourself on the first session of the week, uh, even if that means that you need to um, be off legs. So just do a spin and, and a strength session in the gym. Keep your feet on the ground just so you're not aggravating that foot. Um, that would be. A good thing and I wouldn't stress about not getting a big session in and, and training with the group if if we need to recover and get that foot right and that means you can train well on Thursday going into your Saturday game um, then so be it obviously if you if you try running around jogging and it feels good then listen to your body and, and train a bit um, but yeah modify your intensity on the Tuesday and then make sure you do a good fitness test on Thursday so you know mentally and physically you're not letting yourself down or putting yourself at risk of injury but also you're not letting the team down that would be my best advice, Luke. So that's good to hear that you've had um, diagnosis, mate. All right, we'll leave it there. Moving back over to YouTube now. Um, so this week's power tip will be on um, the importance of our strength and power program in season. So a quick little story Um to start with with this one, I was working in a program a few years ago and we had an alternating program between our two key lifts for lower body, trap bar, deadlifts and box squats. And what we found around round four and six is we're having a few lower, bit, lower back issues. Even one key player actually had to miss a game, um, which was an AFL game. So uh, obviously not what we want, not ideal at all. So what we learned from that and something that I've always had a strong value of now in my philosophy from a strength point of view is to try and be consistent with our strength exercises, particularly lower body lifts um, and those ones that are quite demanding um, that we want to get some good loads out to keep our strength up, like the trap bar deadlift. So either if we're going to alternate movements, which I no longer do, we sort of just stick with them and then we'll bring in new movements in by weeks because we haven't got a game that week. Obviously, it's low risk. And then the other way that we take it is we don't just go straight from the floor, we'll lift off mats just to intro that movement back in, get used to bracing again. Um, the, you know, the trap bar can be quite strange to brace with our hands on the side compared to the front. I think it can be quite harder for athletes to brace properly uh, and therefore the lower back issues, that's more anecdotal um, from my coaching experience. So um, they're the two learnings from that and hence why consistency is the key power tip for this week. So what we know from a – that's from an injury reduction point of view, trying to reduce the likelihood of injuries and going into games um, strong and and feeling good and not, not in pain and not, not muscle soreness in areas that we don't want, like the lower back. But also from a performance point of view, we know with power lifters, weight lifters, anyone that's super strong, they're incredibly consistent and there's not a lot of variation in their core lifts um, over the years. So um, from a strength development point of view, those key lifts do well from – uh, not changing them around as, as often as maybe we would like. The variety can come in some of the unilateral stuff, the core work, the arms, other areas, mobility drills. But for those key strength um, lifts in season particularly, we want to try and stick with a minimum of eight-week sort of blocks and then changing those uh, if we feel the need in a bye week. Um, so that's this week's power tip. If you're interested in our program and giving it a go, make sure to head over to our website, propellacapro.com, where there's a free trial. Uh, you can join and try out our program, which is on Team Builder, which most AFL clubs use, and you get a free trial for 14 days. Uh, now that it's Sunday for listening to this on the Monday, I'll make sure to upload that so you get the, the full seven day of, of next week as well as the seven days after. 
If you join later on the week, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, what I'll typically do is start you on the following Monday because we're in season. We want to try and make sure we get that consistency with our weeks. I want to thank Tilly is the God for our review. Uh, she wrote, my go-to podcast, worth a listen if you want to understand what goes on behind the scenes and strength and conditioning parts of the AFL. Really appreciate the review, Tilly. And for, if you're a listener and you, and you haven't written a review yet, I'd really appreciate it. It allows us to reach more fans for the podcast uh, and ultimately uh, helps us help you. It's also a great way to give us some feedback on what you like about the podcast or specific episodes so we can I can reach out to more of those types of guests, whether it be a sports psychologist, AFL player, AFL coach, or uh, maybe someone a little bit different like during the week we did a sports journalist and that was something that you liked. So it's also a great way to give us some feedback. Um, that's it for this week, guys. Um, like I mentioned in the power tip, remember that we do want to, and, and also for Michelle's great question around Sunday games, how do we want to prepare? It was a, it was a nice segue into our strength and power, which is our development focus for this week with the guys on our program, um, where we want to make sure we've still got that intent to lift heavy in the, early in the week and that intent to move fast late in the week. Our volumes are right down at the moment, anywhere between 50%. Uh, sometimes with a six-day recovery, we reduce even more. Um, by taking off a session and, and adding in a total body session for the week. So really, really important for those that we work around the game day number one with everything that we do from a lifestyle point of view, but also from a training point of view. And then that emphasis of lifting heavier on the week with your lower body, even if you're feeling a bit sore, that's not going to affect us for that week. Uh, it's too far away from the game. You're going to recover. But what we do know is that come September, where, we, where it's a more contested game and we want to really important the, the, um, the collisions are, are more intense, that we've got that body armour and you've also got that strength through the legs um, to be able to uh, play your role and help your team win in September. Whereas if you drop off, motivation drops off and you haven't lifted for a few months and you try and get it going, that deconditioning effect of not lifting for eight weeks, you'll just get too sore and you're a mile behind. Uh, also, from a long-term athlete development point of view, if you can minimise that de deficit in season and still maintain a good level of strength, then you can keep topping up every off-season, pre-season, and that allows you to um, become a well-rounded athlete, opposed to someone who's like a yo-yo. They lift really well in off-season, pre-season, then they don't do anything in the gym, and they're always resetting uh, every off-season, pre-season, playing catch-up. Hopefully they are tips help, guys. Make sure to remember to subscribe not only to our podcast but also YouTube as well. We post educational content, short-form videos every week. You can check out that YouTube channel, Prepare Like a Pro. I'll see you guys on the next episode.